So in this video, I'm going to be covering all of the major statistics regarding AI development because I do believe that this video is going to be important regarding how much AI development there is impacting the workforce. This is one of the videos for post AI economics. So hopefully you find this video valuable, helping you to understand how the workforce is evolving and moving rapidly with AI. So let's take a look at everything that is going on. So by 2025, 2 million workers in manufacturing could be replaced by automated tools. And this is due to a report by MIT slash Boston University. And it says that most of these automated tools are robots, not strictly AI, but some of these jobs lost will be replaced with new AI tools. By 2030, 14% of global employees, the global workforce will have been forced to change their career because of AI. So this is 375 million workers. And this is due to a study done by McKinsey. Now, I do wonder if that study is going to be updated with the advent of AGI, does it take into account artificial general intelligence? Because whilst now, of course, it only seems like people on Twitter and people heavy into the AI space consider it as a real possibility. But I'm wondering if it is something that is considered as a part of their study. It also says that one in four CEOs expect generative AI to lead to job cuts of 5% or more in 2024. So PwC surveyed 4,702 CEOs from 105 countries about the potential job losses resulting from generative AI tools. And only a minority of them, surprisingly, believed that generative AI would lead to significant job cuts. But that small figure could still represent tens of thousands of jobs for across various organizations and countries. Now, I think this one right here is because they've done 4,000 CEOs across 105 countries. And I think one of the things that people still forget is that not every company is a tech company in America. There are so many companies that are like steel and mining and gas that just do stuff in the old fashioned way. So I am wondering if that is what accounts for a lot of those, you know, roles to where they think that, you know, AI is not going to have an impact. But like I said before, I do wonder if this is going to change with the advent of humanoid robotics and of course, artificial general intelligence. So of course, these videos are gonna be like a time capsule. You can see here 75% of CEOs think generative AI will significantly change their businesses within the next three years. A large majority of business leaders polled by PwC foresaw the need for training new skills, improving cybersecurity protocols and a host of other changes all due to the introduction and adoption of generative AI. We also had 80% of the US workforce could have at least 10% of their tasks impacted by large language models. Now, interestingly enough here, it states that this is 80% of the workforce and this is 10% of their tasks impacted by LLMs. Now, two things to know. It says impacted, which doesn't mean that this is a negative impact. It just means that your work is going to be changed in some way or altered in some way. It could be for the best. It could be for the worst, which is why it just says impacted. Now, of course, it says practically every job involves some tasks that are vulnerable to being you know, automated by AI and only a small minority of workers are completely unexposed to AI. Now, it also states here that, you know, more than 7.5 million data entry jobs will be lost by 2027. This is something that I've got, you know, as, you know, vulnerable on my, as you can see on my AI job impact tracker, I've put data entry and administrative tasks, data science, I've put it high and I've put the tool, of course, chat GPT. There's also a new tool called AutoGrid AI. And I've put this as the susceptibility, if I can pronounce the word, um, as quite high, because of course, you know, this is going to be a job that is of course quite high. So this is something that I've already managed to track. And of course it says here, this represents the largest predicted job loss of any profession. The professionals that are predicted to lose the most jobs are that, that you know, are just extremely vulnerable to AI data entry clerks was first administrative secretaries, administrative secretaries was second and accounting was third and I actually used, you know, some of these models to do some accounting recently. And Surprisingly, it was effective, it was fast, and it was really, really good. So don't think that that is not coming for accounting, although there are some still needs for, you know, human accountants for a, a various, you know, different things. For example, consulting on different, you know, tax strategies. Those are going to be some things that, you know, you need to do, especially considering some AIs, you know, like I said before, they're out of date. The cutoff knowledge is not always up to date. And of course, sometimes if they hallucinate on your accounting, you're going to be completely screwed. So uh, yeah, it's always still best to keep a human in the loop. Of course, it says here, 44% of companies who plan to use AI think it will 
will cause layoffs in 2024. However, just 21% of companies said AI would definitely cause layoffs in 2024, and the other 23% were less certain. It says 47% of US workers are at risk of losing their jobs to automation over the coming decade. This was a report by CEPR. And in this case, automation also includes non-AI tools like robots. Now, interestingly enough, it says that it will take 20 years to automate just half of current worldwide tasks. While the potential economic gains from automation are great, they are a difficult potential to fully realize and various barriers prevent widespread adoption of automation tools. And these barriers, which can't be legal, which can be legal, political and sociological and technological or something else entirely makes, you know, may, may, may make it take decades to come. Basically, what they're saying here is that certain professions are just going to bar AI because they just don't want them in the field. And that's completely understandable you know like lawyers doctors you know i think you know like pilots you know those industries you know where you've had to spend a really long time getting your degree and entering that industry it's it's gonna you know take quite some time for ai to penetrate the industry because number one nobody really wants it and number two there's all of these you know laws and legislations that you're gonna have to update to ensure that it's actually effective and you know in some industries i remember someone was recently sharing the fact that you know, the actual failure rate of certain Boeing parts is like 0.000000, like 8%, which is remarkably insane, um, which just goes to show how safe airplanes are. But the point is that like, you know, AI systems hallucinate at like 95% or something like that. So, you know, in industries where you really can't afford to make any kind of mistakes, it's going to be a long time before they manage to penetrate those industries. And yeah, 23.5% of US companies have replaced workers with ChatGPT, which is, you know, rather surprising. And it says, according to a resume builder survey of a thousand US business leaders, 49% companies have already adopted ChatGPT. And of those companies, 48% has said that the tool has replaced AI workers. Now, one thing that I want to get into here is that, you know, when we actually take a look at this stuff, it's easy to say, oh, people are predicting this, they're predicting that, this many jobs were lost, that has happened. But one thing that we don't talk about is the fact that like, there are so many things that are just not going to be created because of AI. If you remember, one of the things that Tyler Perry did was he put his $800 million studio expansion on hold after seeing the OpenAI Sora and was basically like, look, okay, I was going to spend, I, I just hate the like a billion different ads on these websites, like please. But, um, you know, he was like, um, you know, this $800 million, you know, studio expansion is going to go crazy. And then wait a minute, Sora's coming. Okay, I'm not going to invest $800 million, which is a remarkable number of jobs that would have been there that have been lost. So, it's always important to remember that whilst, yes, you know, you can talk about how this job is lost and that job is lost, a lot of jobs, you know, are just never going to be created. And a lot of products are just never going to be created because, of course, AI is going to be something that just completely, you know, removes the growth from certain industries. In May 2023, 3,900 US job losses were directly linked to AI. Those 3,900 jobs represented 5% of total jobs lost that month. And in turn, that made AI the seventh largest job eliminator in the United States. We also have some more statistics here. Of course, it says 90% of workers are employed in jobs that are the most exposed to AI. And to calculate which jobs were most exposed to AI, researchers at Pew Research ranked professions based on how much workers relied on tasks that could be fully automated. The top 25% of jobs, when ranked in this way, were considered most exposed to AI. Interestingly enough, 27% of workers with a bachelor's degree or higher are employed in jobs most exposed to AI. So, you know, it, it seems insane that like people who have worked hard, got a degree and now facing the short end of the stick when it comes to automation as workers with higher levels of education attainment were more likely to be employed in professions considered most exposed to AI. Just 3% of workers with less than high school degrees worked in jobs most exposed to AI. So this is like it's insane and like when you hear people saying that the middle class is being squeezed i mean you can completely understand why funnily enough right here you can see that workers in jobs considered most exposed to ai and you know a little bit more than those who were in jobs least exposed to ai we also had the stat that employers think that 42 percent of tasks will fully be automated by 2027 and i'm wondering if this is related to agi and what was interesting is that they said this represents a five point decrease from their 2020 prediction so this more conservative estimate could reflect doubts about whether ai tools will continue improving at the pace that they have over the last few years but of course as you know no ai progress is not slowing down anytime soon 65 percent of tasks related to data processing and information could be fully automated by 2027 i 100 percent agree with this because if we've seen anything about data processing and information it's that chat GPT can already do a lot there are already specialized tools that can already do so much and there are literally specialized softwares being built to you know do a lot of this stuff so 
this is going to be, you know, really interesting to see how the data entry field manages to change over the next three years. It also states that over the next three years, 120 million workers will undergo retraining due to AI changing business demands. So training is one of the major barriers to widespread adoption of AI tools. It represents a significant cost burden to any employer considering embracing AI. Nevertheless, tens of millions of workers will be retrained either to use AI tools or to perform new tasks after old ones are automated by AI. One of the things that most people don't know is that there's still so much out there that you can do with AI. Like I wish I could cover absolutely everything, but there is so much that you can do and so much opportunity in the AI field in order to make money just teaching people AI because there are just like literally 10 tools released every day that are actually good, you can actually use. And I mean, I can't imagine the amount of, you know, companies and industries that are gonna be impacted by AI over the next coming years. You know, you can also see here an, an interesting stat was that it said, you know, um, only 34% of organizations are reskilling their employees to work with new AI tools. And that's despite the fact that limited skills is the largest barrier faced by enterprises attempting to deploy those AI tools. And according to IBM's research, 20% of the companies don't have employees with the right skills to use new AI tools, and 16% are unable to find new hires to fill this skill gap. You can see here that it also says where AI is being adopted, larger organizations are twice as likely than smaller enterprises to embrace AI, and adopting AI actually does come with, you know, significant costs that only larger or organizations can absorb. So of course, these are the organizations that are, you know, likely to absorb AI slash absorb these AI tools and use them. And 75% of, you know, organizations are likely to adopt AI by 2027. So for those of you thinking that this might not be coming to your workplace, you know, if you do anything on a computer, a 75% chance that this is likely to be adopted. Now, if you enjoyed this community and you want more up-to-date stats, don't forget to check out the post AGI preparedness community where I have my entire database of jobs that are currently being impacted by AI. And I've also made a new database of the new opportunities and the new jobs that are being created by Generative AI. When I tell you there are so many new things that you didn't even think about, it's always worth it to come check it out. If you don't want to join, that's completely fine. But this is just a shameless plug to the community that I'm currently running with over 250 members. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, found some value. Leave some comments and let me know exactly what you guys 